Hi there, this is Josh from Literary Gladiators, and today I'm here with a book review. It's been quite some time since I've been able to review a book on the channel because most of my reading has been for uh, upcoming discussions for Literary Gladiators, and uh, I just finished filming a 46-episode season for season 10, and uh, the uh, book that I'm going to be reviewing is something that I bought for uh, the sake of nostalgia. And I'm so glad that I did because it really gave me that great sense of uh, uh, lighthearted but meaningful uh, assurance and uh, as it pertains to uh, wit and wisdom. And uh, the book that I'm talking about is Love the Fur You're In. Uh, this was uh, written, uh, this was put together by Random House, and uh, there are various illustrators based off of who illustrated a particular uh, book, uh, because this is pretty much a collection of, this is Monster Wit and Wisdom from Sesame Street, and uh, Sesame Street is celebrating its 50th anniversary. Uh, I grew up on Sesame Street the way that a lot of younger kids grew up on Disney. Uh, Sesame Street was the world that I was engaged in when I was younger. I was more of a uh, an enthusiast for uh, Jim Henson's Muppet universe as opposed to uh, the universe of Walt Disney. And uh, Love the Fur You're In contains uh, illustrations from various publications of theirs, and they make mention to each of them on the, the bottom of the page, and then more specifically at the back of the book. Uh, but uh, they use an illustration, and uh, they caption it with a wise piece of advice. Uh, one of the prime examples is Love the Fur You're In. Uh, and these pieces of advice can range from uh, general wise words of wisdom to uh, things that simply pertain to uh, Sesame Street terms. Uh, when it comes to uh, Cookie Monster, it would pertain to eating cookies. And uh, if it pertained, uh, it, you have those specific uh, words of wisdom, but also those that cross over where it pertains to the, uh, the, the Muppet or the character at hand, but at the same time, uh, it, uh, it is a, uh, realteration of another, uh, piece of advice. Uh, for instance, uh, be somebody's, uh, be somebody's super grover, uh, which is often seen as be somebody's superhero. Uh, it's things of that nature. And I'm going to be a bit more specific toward uh, the latter part of the video. If there's some of you that want to approach this book uh, blind, uh, I'm going to make mention to the fact that uh, there is a semi-spoiler warning, but there really isn't because uh, it's pretty much, it's kind of like the Book of Awesome, where it's just illustrations and pieces of advice that are bound to, uh, that are bound to spark an emotion or just put a smile on your face. Uh, I thought this book was amazing. I gave it a five out of five. And I think this is a standard enough book that while I tend not to rank uh, children's books in my best of the year, I am really thinking about putting this in my ranking. Uh, and there's a very good chance that this will make my top 10. Uh, but uh, we're going to move on to uh, the more detailed version where I show you some of my favorite uh, illustrations. And uh, and show you some and and the examples. Uh, probably the one that speaks to me the most is something that I've always uh, 
that BookTube has only assured me of even more. And that is... There's no such thing as too many books. That is speaking my language uh, forthright. And uh, this particular illustration reminds me... It's from uh, a book that was... Uh, the, depending on the way that you put it, it was written by Elmo. Uh, but it reminds me of the uh, VHS uh, of The Best of Elmo, which was a uh, celebration of the best Elmo sketches during that time. Uh, Elmo's become a, a phenomenon for the show, but uh, during, the, during his first nine years, he really did have some... Uh, standout content, and a lot of it, per, uh, and one of the major parts of the uh, video was he had these illustrations of uh, these uh, appearances, and uh, he was going to submit them to, uh, he, was, he had to submit one of them to an art show, but he found himself giving all of them away to his friends, uh, and this is how this is what his uh, drawings would look like. Uh, a lot of them are, a lot of these are confidence boosters. Uh, when you have a gift, give it to others, which is something I like to live by. I want to be able to work my way up in an area that I'm passionate about and then use that to help other people. Uh, use the platform to help other people uh, achieve their dreams in uh, an area in which I'm strong. And I keep, uh, I keep looking back to the uh, Louis Untermeyer poem, Prayer, where uh, even where I, when I reach that point, uh, I still want that sense of dissatisfaction in which I want to work even harder. Here's uh, Be Someone Super Grover. I think the one that's really speaking to me the most is uh, toward the end of the book, where uh, uh, Biff and Sully make an appearance here. They were two uh, nostalgic classic characters. I know that the uh, HBO reboot is doing what they can to incorporate some throwbacks into their episodes a little bit more. Uh, but this piece of advice, uh, done is better than perfect, has really been speaking out to me uh, because uh, I sometimes have that sense of pressure, uh, be it self-inflicted or trying to satisfy other people in which I need to uh, reach that top peak, but perfect is subjective. Uh, done is a clear action. And when it comes to producing content for this channel, for instance, I want to come with the best, I want to do the best that I possibly can. But in some retrospects, having a video up, uh, it doesn't have to be the most perfectly edited thing, but it's a voice, and I just want to have my voice out there. Uh, and it doesn't, I've pretty much begun to, I've, I've, I've begun to embrace the idea that uh, having something to say is more important than how it is you say it. And the support with others and uh, the fact that you give yourself that opportunity to interact is uh, the most meaningful thing of all. And that tidbit, uh, that uh, piece of advice of done is better than perfect uh, really says a lot. As long as, I mean, there's the the contingencies as long as uh, it's, in this instance, uh, as long as nothing is broken or whatnot, or if it's broken and can be fixed. But 
the general message is exactly where uh, it's getting at, and I completely get what they're saying. And the illustrations, uh, this one here is just beautiful. I, I there, it's quite something that uh, Sesame Street for the fiftieth anniversary is uh, coming out with some throwbacks and re-releasing classic books of theirs. I know that there's the uh, ABCs with Grover where he shapes himself into so many of the, where he shapes himself into the letters of the alphabet. Uh, here is an illustration from uh, the Sesame Street storybook from 1971. And at the very back of the book, it uh, makes mention to who each of them are. Right here, uh, there's a uh, particular, uh, there's also uh, particular illustrators. There's actually uh, on the top window, uh, Jim Henson and Frank Oz. They're very uh, vague uh, sketches. Some of them you could see clearly, like, uh, like Big Bird, Oscar, Grover. But there's uh, Mr. Hooper's right here, and you can just see him peeking out the window. But I think that this book is just amazing, and I think that anybody that enjoyed uh, Sesame Street during their childhood and still enjoys its nostalgia and how it really is a great piece of entertainment. It is among the best because it could entertain everybody. Uh, I think that this is a testament uh, to uh, their, uh, their childhood, their memories, their desires, and I think this is worth buying. Thank you for tuning into this video. I hope you check out some more videos from our channel, and for now, Keep reading.